Hello, welcome everybody. This is Dr. Bolat, board certified physician in cardiology, interventional cardiology, and internal medicine. I'm here to help you with all the information you need for your heart health and general health, and informing you about all the latest treatments in cardiology and medicine. If you are new to this channel, then definitely consider hitting the subscribe button below and switch on the notification bell so you don't miss any new video that I post. For my international viewers outside the United States, you can get translated subtitles for this video by pressing the closed caption CC button on the upper right part of your mobile device screen and selecting your preferred language from the settings. Previously, I made a video called heart catheterization surgery where I concentrated on the left heart catheterization. And at that time, I promised to return later to right heart catheterization. In this video, I will talk to you about right heart catheterization. This is the passage of a catheter to measure pressure and oxygen saturations in the right heart chambers. When you hear the word cardiac catheterization, this generally refers to left heart catheterization in which catheters are passed to the left side of the heart to evaluate the left, left heart pressures and look into the coronary arteries. Right heart catheterization is strictly evaluating the right side of the heart, as shown in the image on the left side of the screen, evaluating the right atrium, the right ventricle, and the pulmonary arteries, all colored purple in this image. To give an overview, as shown in this image, venous blood returns from the legs and lower body via the inferior vena cava and from the head uh, via the superior vena cava, returns to the right atrium. Blood is then pumped through the tricuspid valve to the right ventricle. Blood is then pumped through the pulmonary valve to the pulmonary arteries, which delivers blood to the lungs. In the lungs, blood gets oxygenated and is then delivered to the left atrium. Blood is then pumped to the left ventricle through the mitral valve. From the left ventricle, blood is pumped through the aortic valve to the rest of the body. A schematic representation of what happens is shown here on this image, which shows the right and the left sided circulations are working in series. In this video, I will concentrate on evaluating the right side of the heart by catheterization. The right side of the heart receives deoxygenated blood from the head and lower body, and the blood is passed through the chambers of the heart and eventually delivers to the left side of the heart to the left atrium, as shown on this diagram. We perform right heart catheterization to differentiate different causes of shock which is rapid drop in blood pressure and whether the shock is cardiogenic, meaning caused by the heart, or hypovolemic due to low fluid or blood volume, or distributive due to infection, or obstructive due to a massive pulmonary clot, referred to as pulmonary embolism, obstructing flow of blood to the lungs. Right heart catheterization is also done to differentiate between the causes of why fluid accumulates in the lungs and whether the heart is a contributing factor. We also perform right heart catheterization to evaluate the cardiac output of how many liters of blood the heart is pumping per minute. To measure the blood pressure in the pulmonary arteries, to diagnose heart shunts and holes in the heart, and to evaluate unexplained shortness of breath. Here is how I perform the procedure. The patient is brought to the cardiac catheterization laboratory and access to the right sided circulation is gained through the venous system and a short axis sheath is placed. Access can be obtained through the femoral veins in the legs as can be seen here. Alternatively, Venous access can also be obtained through the jugular vein in the neck. 
and also through the arm veins or subclavian veins. The catheter is then used to go all the way up to the right atrium. A commonly used catheter for this purpose is the swan gans catheter, as shown here. This catheter is taken all the way up to the right atrium and the pressure measured and if needed, blood samples to measure oxygen saturations is taken. This is what I see on the monitor when I perform the procedure. And here is a schematic representation of how it should look. I then guide my catheter to the right ventricle and this is what I see on the monitor. And here is a schematic representation of how it should look. I then pass my catheter up from the right ventricle to the pulmonary artery as can be seen here in this video. This is the pulmonary artery pressure that I see in the monitor in front of me. And here is a schematic representation of how it should look. I then inflate the balloon at the tip of the swan gans catheter and push it further to the pulmonary artery branches to wedge it and to get the pulmonary artery wedge pressure. This is the pulmonary artery pressure that I see in the monitor in front of me. And here is a schematic representation of how it should look. I then deflate the balloon and make sure that I have documented all the pressures and taken all the blood samples to measure the oxygen saturations in the different chambers of the right side of the heart. If this is complete, then I remove my catheter and then remove the axis sheath and apply gentle pressure to maintain hemostasis in the axis vein. This would conclude the right heart catheterization procedure. If you have any question about what I presented to you today or any medical question in general, then subscribe to my channel and share your question in the comments section below and I will reply to you. If you have a question that you would not like to share in public, then subscribe to this channel Follow me on Twitter at Dr. Bolad and send me a private Twitter direct message and I will reply to you. Please like and share this message with family and friends. This is Dr. Bolad helping you with your heart health. Thanks for watching and talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.